Let's look ahead now to what we can expect with political analyst Sanit Madonsela from UNISA joining me for this conversation. Thank you so much, Sanit, for your time. I mean, what are your expectations, if any, uh, coming from the ANC Western Cape's elective conference this since 2015? Um, I think that there is a lot to expect. I think most people are just relieved that they're actually having their conference, given that it was supposed to take place in April this year. Um, I think that, as they've mentioned, that unity and cohesion is something big for them, given how um, like mismatched everything has been, given the fact that some of the... Um, branches have been weak, given that they have low memberships, given the loss of activists in terms of, and public servants in terms of the um, the ANC in the Western Cape. I think that that would be just uh, their main focus, just consolidating their support base. Mm. I mean, also one of the uh, agenda items, uh, at least from reports coming in, as well as the media briefing that we heard uh, ahead of the conference, and it was with regards to vote buying and uh, uh, the issue around money in terms of that influencing leadership outcomes. I had a discussion with uh, Gwede Mandashi about this last year at the National Elective Conference, and today again with Cameron Dugmore. It still seems it's a persisting issue uh, within the political party, and I just wonder if this will at all help with their renewal agenda if leaders could potentially still be influenced by how much, of course, uh, money was spent to put them in those positions? The unfortunate part is I don't think it is something that is going to stop immediately or even in the near future. I think that it would actually get worse in the future, given how weak the political party is, given the fact that the political party is struggling to pay jobs. If people vote for people who would be able to ensure that they have an income, then that would obviously be something that would sway a lot of the candidates and a lot of the delegates who will be attending the conference. I think that the ANC's renewal agenda is not working um, quite yet. I think that if you have a lot of challenges at the top of the structure, it tends to seep down into the lower echelons of the party. But I think that we've been seeing this decay over a number of years. And I think that this is just the fruit that it has bid and what we can uh, possibly see based on what's happening in terms of the internal structures. Mm. So, so what do you think, uh, what's the amount of work that lies ahead of them? Because without a doubt, the general elections are looming. There's a lot of work that needs to be done uh, by the ANC in the, com, in the, in the province because uh, Noblum Kokonlo had briefed the media and actually admitted uh, that the position within the province that the ANC has is rather at its weakest, uh, you know, for more than a decade now. So there seems to be a lot of groundwork that still needs to be done by the ANC. Uh, but of course, we know that elections are are also just around the corner. I think that one of the first things that they would have to do is they would have to address the weak structures. I think once you have uh, suitable candidates in place, it would be e easier to start mobilizing people in terms of growing your membership base. I think that uh, an additional thing would be to actually work in the communities where you are a councillor, etc. Because I think that's one of the things people are not going to vote for people who are not actually working in terms of their communities. But I think that the ANC in the Western Cape has a bigger challenge than the ANC in other provinces, given that you have other parties also vying for those votes. The DA is quite strong in that area. You now have the good party. The Freedom Front is also quite good in terms of that part, uh, that section. And then you also have newer, smaller political parties that are also coming up. So it would be a lot of work that they would have to put in. Um, and I think a lot of it will have to do with trust building and actually showing that they are part of the renewal program. I think if you look at a province, for example, like the Free State, it would be much easier for the ANC to get people there, given some of the changes that are already taking place in the province. So I think that um, it's just uh, looking in terms of the challenges that are there and then also trying to find viable solutions and trying to regain the community's trust. Yeah. And, and as we're talking about this, uh, Sanet, with regards to the work that lies uh, ahead for the ANC in the Western Cape, it's without a doubt that they would need a strong leadership structure because uh, uh, Noblumko also alluded to the fact of weak structures, a weak leadership, internal squabbles, uh, being at the root of this weakened stance of the party within the province. So when it comes to some of the candidates then that we're seeing vying for the position of chairpersonship, I mean, we're seeing the likes of uh, Cameron Duckmore that I spoke to this morning,
Uh, we're seeing Richard Kianki. Uh, we're also seeing the likes of uh, Justin D. Allende. And I just wonder, in terms of some of the names that have been put in the hat, uh, what do you make of these candidates? Do you think they are those uh, potential leaders that could lead the Western Cape to that ladder in the tunnel? Um, I unfortunately think that this is the best that ANC has to offer in terms of the um, the Western Cape. I do think that Dagmo would be a better candidate. Uh, Diati would also be quite de uh, decent for a second runner-up, should it not be the former. But I, I don't think that there are a lot of strong options to look at. I think it's just picking the best of the bunch that are already running. All right, well, we'll leave it there. And I appreciate you speaking to me about this political analyst, uh, Sanit Matonsela. Thank you so much uh, for your time. We know that the ANC in the Western Cape holding its elective conference, uh, the first since 2015. And uh, this, they say, for a renewal agenda, but also gearing themselves ahead of the 2024 general elections. We'll give you those updates as they do occur.